Hi, this is Steve Lentini, and I'm your host for the podcast, Different Thinking for Different Times. This is Season 3, Episode 14. I want to start with a quote from Ernest Holmes. If we think of ourselves as being separated from the universe, we shall be limited by this thought. For it is a belief in separation from God which binds and limits. So whether you think it's God or the divine or the goddess, the Brahma, the Buddha, the Muhammad, the Christ consciousness, the Abraham, whatever you want to call it, whatever your background, we're not separate. It's that belief. If you look back through history, if you do some research, that most violence and craziness has occurred. It, if you fast forward to modern times, we have still the idea that there's different races other than the human race. And people fighting over land and resources and ideology. We're supposed to think differently. If you look at people's concern over others thinking differently on a political level in any country, you can see all the occurrences of violence where people have certainly listened to what I call that small-minded thinker, the acorn brain. I use an acorn because you can clearly look at an acorn and know it has potential to become an oak tree. And truly, you can use any seed, a tomato, an apple, a pumpkin. Each of those seeds have all the ingredients to become specifically, though, what that seed is designed to become. Humans, we have the ego, hubris, the acorn brain. We have to overcome that. That's our life's journey. And, and each of our journeys are as different as fingerprints. They're all individual. And the other individual's journey truly is none of our business. It boils down to each of us individually working on ourselves. And first, to develop a level of thinking above our thinking. And there's lots of resources on that. If you research it, Dr. Srikumar Rao, I've mentioned his book, Are You Ready to Succeed? He talks about developing that observer level, the witness level. Dr. Roland Alexander in Wise Mind, Open Mind talks about it. And actually, both of them give a process on how to develop it. And once we begin to recognize we all have small-minded thinking, and what's important is for each person to individually begin that journey of overcoming all those thoughts, not believing them. Imagine just wanting all your friends to think exactly like you and getting angry when they think differently. They're supposed to. Part of their journey is to challenge you and help you grow, to overcome that, and to realize that somewhere there's either middle ground or just surrendering to the fact that it's not your job to change their mind. If you think of recent political events, there were all kinds of people on social media thinking they have to change people's minds, and they spent countless hours and energy making each other wrong and going back and forth, all wasted could have been done, could have been spent, time spent on something far more healthy and productive. Because after all, in a democracy, we have to surrender at some point to the will of the majority, whatever that is. And when we get over ourselves individually, we'll all be okay, no matter what the path is. Because do you think that in a universe, that something's out of order? 
Nothing's out of order. The divine is never separate from us, as Ernest Holmes likes to suggest. But you have to prove that for yourself, not to take my word for it or Ernest, his word for it. Emmett Fox, in the Sermon on the Mount, and in a lot of his writings, and Martin Buber in his work, they all talked about not following anyone else, but to prove the journey for yourself, to prove that you live in a miracle, or to prove whatever it is you want to prove to yourself, using your life as an experiment. I mean, there's been examples all through history, too, of people that have swallowed the pill, so to speak, or drank the Kool-Aid, following someone else's plan. The thing is to develop your own self-awareness, your own journey that includes acceptance. Proof that acceptance and one with the divine and looking at life as feedback that what ever created this miracle we live in. Can you imagine if that life force ever took its attention off us? This all would end. And yet most people spend parts of their day or maybe parts of their life, significant parts of it, making others wrong, making the journey wrong, and reality nuts, as Eckhart Tolle says. I often think about his saying that when you fight life, life fights you. And so the purpose of this podcast is to help people just question their own thinking. Your answers questioned. Is it small-minded? What could be limitless, infinite thinking? What would model that which created this amazing miracle we live in? Physicists in recent super collider experiments found particles acting in unexpected ways. I chuckled at that. They were called muons. They're called muons, M-U-O-N-S, acting in unexpected ways. That's the challenge with human thinking. We get upset when humans act in unexpected ways, but after all, don't our children do it, our relatives, our employees? our bosses, our shoppers, our police, our politicians, our leaders. We're just all human, and we have to get away from, over time, this idea that everybody has to be one way or the other or the same, and then there's no space for any dialogue or negotiation or consideration for another's point of view. In this country, in the United States, our political leaders have been modeling poor behavior for years, 25 or 30 years. Congress hasn't been able to get anything done because they spend so much time pointing fingers at each other. And you'd think at one point someone would say, when are we going to stop this madness and escape from our small-minded thinking? They're really stuck in it. And it's fascinating to me. And I, I know nothing's out of order in a universe. And I know the gift in all of this is at some point people will wake up to the idea. Let's work to make each other right and found, find common ground. There is some place in the middle for sure, but not without dialogue. But that's expanded thinking that perhaps both sides could be right. Ben Franklin, in his autobiography, written by Frank Woodworth Pine, his view was, I think you might have been right. And I think you've been right a lot on this. And right now, I think perhaps there's something else to consider. Would you consider this? And then he would expound on his idea but he didn't want to make people wrong. So he'd say, that sounds like that would work. Perhaps not in this situation. Would you consider something different? Fascinating way to invite people to consider something different. 
But ego, when you want to make others wrong so you can be right, is railing against what someone believes. And it's okay. You might change their mind with a dialogue and they might change yours. But small-minded, finite thinking, limited thinking, is never going to get us where we want to go as a human race. When I left this existence for what's next, on November 18th, 2002, I was one with everything and nothing, without a body, instantly knowing I was one with everything and nothing. There was no past. Instantly, too, I knew there was no past or future. There was only the now. And then there was a life review, much like a, a scene change, because it was a now and a now and a now and a now. So there was no body, one with everything and nothing, and nothing from here, by the way, included including my small-minded thinking, because I never say I'm exempt from it, and back in my body, it returns. And I know the purpose of it is to help me relax and surrender and expand and grow into what's more like what created this existence. And so there was one with everything and nothing. It was just a knowing, then a life review, and only the good I had done. Only the good I had done was mentioned, the lives I had touched. Family, friends, strangers, people I bought sandwiches for, gave money to on the street. Only the good I had done. Which made sense to me later in my body. So I couldn't string the events together until I was back in my body. After the life review, again, another now, stay or go. The question asked from a voice I cannot describe. Stay or go? And then my consciousness in that next now was, thy will be done. Truly had never surrendered like that. And then the next now was back in intensive care for another 95 days. It was on the fifth day that I had that experience. And another 95 days, 60 straight and 40 out of the next 60, a total of 100 days in the hospital six months out of work, and grateful for the whole journey. And what I learned from that day, November 18th, was nothing from here goes with us into the infinite consciousness. And it was infinite mercy, infinite grace, all in the now. In the now, in the moment is where the divine is. And of course, humans with hubris, we want to be right, make others wrong. And then we want to rail against certain events that show up as Eckhart Tolle says, right? We often think reality is nuts. But it's in the now. And especially in the events that bother us and bug us. And the people that bother us and bug us, they're gifts from the divine, from the infinite life force, from God, whatever you want to call it, the goddess, doesn't matter. It had no name, as Lao Tzu said in the Tao Te Ching. Infinite everything. Just, again, nothing from here was there. And I learned, so the divine is in the moment and then surrender to the now. I had not surrendered like that. And I was 50 years old. And I want you to prove that to yourself. Begin to accept what shows up instead of rail against it and fight it and observe life. Let part of you be in the experience and then part of you just observing it. Prove it to yourself. Think about doing good all the time, right? How do you feel when you do good? It's somehow etched onto the fabric of time. And you'll have to take my word for it. Unless, because we never know when what's next is coming. I didn't know that day, five days earlier on November 13th, 2002, while doing a seminar at 3.30, fine, and 3.31 needed an ambulance. 
And I hope you don't pass from this to what's next in the before this podcast ends or the end of this day or the, next week. I wish you all long, long lives. And you never know. So prove it to yourself if it makes a difference, being in the moment, being in the now, and looking at all of life as divine. And all of us as one race, one collective consciousness, working to overcome small-minded thinking, looking to learn and grow from each other. And see if we can get out of this making others wrong consciousness and expand into something infinite, modeling what created this miracle. Because after all, we're floating on a garden planet, perhaps in relation to the size of the universe, a marble, maybe a grain of sand, I don't know. A marble with everything required for life floating around an exposed nuclear fusion plant that we call a sun. And we call it a universe, too, to make it comfortable, to give it definition. Because it's hard for humans, the acorn brain, to consider something infinite that goes on forever, including the life force itself. And it's challenging for the small-minded acorn brain to think of all of this as a gift and divine. We want to stay in the story. We want to prove to others, we're right, they're wrong. Get over yourself. If you can, take the journey. Don't take my word for it. Prove it to yourself. Enjoy the moment. Be with all those that show up and especially those situations and people that really bother you because after all, they're showing you some aspect of you. If you think others are intolerant and you become angry and intolerant of those, they're just showing you your own intolerance. But think of that as a mirror. Everything that is reflected back to you that bothers you is actually a gift. And prove it to yourself. Don't take my word for it. Embark on the journey. The infinite, limitless thinking. Model that which created this miracle we live in and find that place where you're grateful for every moment. And maybe in some things. Not grateful for all, but looking for the lesson. Look for the gift and be here now. Thanks. So uh, you can reach out to me if you want me to, if you'd like to give me some comments, you can leave comments here. You can leave messages here for me on Anchor FM, anchor.fm. You can email me, steve at stevelentini.com, steve at stevelentini.com. And I'm grateful for all the listeners from the 18 countries around the world. And if you want to be interviewed by me, I'm glad to do that too. You can challenge me. I might ask you, does that sound like small-minded thinking? Thank you.